Records. Did you know that before the 1980s, there was a rule that prevented athletes from scraping their swing leg on the ground during triple jump? Now, I know you're thinking, well, physics tell us that if you scrape your foot on the ground as you're pulling it through, it's going to interrupt your force production, timing, rhythm, and balance, and basically it's going to make you perform worse. So I'm not 100% sure why the rule exists in the first place, but something happened at the 1980 Moscow Olympics that was so controversial that they had to go back, look at this rule, and eventually they unbanned it because of this one action. All right, so first, let me just tell you the end result of the 1980 Triple Jump Finals. The Soviet Union ended up with two people on the podium in first and second place. You had Jack Udame in first and Viktor Senev in second, and they were both ahead of the then world record holder, Brazil's Yao Carlos de Oliveira and Australian's Ian Campbell. Now, I know at first glance, there doesn't really seem to indicate anything's out of order here. These were all extremely top elite athletes, all capable of winning. And a matter of fact, the person who ended up getting silver, Soviet Union's Viktor Senev, he had won three consecutive gold medals and was going for his fourth in the same individual event. So he was definitely one of the favorites to win this event. But something unusual started to unfold as this competition went on because both the Brazilian De Oliveira and the Australian Ian Campbell started producing some massive jumps capable of winning the event, but they kept getting called fouls. In addition to that, they weren't measured. You see, eight of the 12 jumps were foul, and no legal jumps were recorded after the third round. Now, really quickly, let me give you some context as to what's considered a valid or legal jump and what is a foul. So, a triple jumper, they run down the runway and they must take off before the end of a board for it to be deemed valid. If any part of their foot crosses this line, then the jump doesn't count and it's considered a foul. Now, I know nowadays we've got these super high speed, slow motion, ultra high definition cameras that can tell us exactly if the foot crosses the line or not. But back then it was up to a person called a line judge and they would sit there right at the foul line and they would make a call in real time whether or not the foot passes the line. And so because humans are fallible to assist this at the end of the takeoff board, there is a second thinner board or sometimes a little overlay or strip of this substance called plasticine and it in a very general sense is kind of like play-doh or molding clay and so you can imagine an athlete running down and their foot crosses the line and they'll step on that plasticine and so if they do there'll be a little mark in that plasticine which can help assist the judge in declaring whether or not the jump is good or not right so if the plasticine has a severe mark they'll actually pull the board and put a new one in but if the mark's just a little minor mark they'll actually repair it right there in place and they'll just take a little small pieces of plasticine they'll put them right in there in the holes and then they'll smooth it over with a putty knife or sponge and so when we look back at the competition and look what happened at the end of round three you had the soviet udame brazil's de oliveira and then third place the other soviet senyev so you can see right here, you've got both Soviets now in metal position. What becomes interesting is that for the remainder of the competition, both De Oliveira and Australia's Ian Campbell failed to get any of their jumps measured, even though some of these jumps were really long jumps capable of winning. Matter of fact, later in the competition, Ian Campbell had another massive jump well past the Olympic record mark, would have won the competition, but the officials ruled it a foul again. Now, this time, there was no mark. So the officials then declared he had committed something called a scrape foul, which was an interpretation of the rules at the time which stated that the trailing leg, the swing leg, the, the sleeping leg that pulls through, it could not touch the track during the jump. So when he went to appeal, the officials told him he had dragged his foot on the step phase. So I'm going to show you the video here. It's a little grainy, but I'll let you make your own judgment on this. Now, regardless, they raked the sand pit as soon as he jumped and the mark didn't count but it's thought to have been right around 17.50 meters or about 57 feet 7 inches and in the last round saying have improved to a 17.24 meter jump or 56 feet 6 and 3 quarter inches which allowed him to move in the second place and that bumped de oliveira down into third now during the event and after both de oliveira and campbell had insisted that they hadn't scraped and that these foul calls were complete bogus and then allegations quickly started to arise that the officials were intentionally throwing out the best jumps to favor the soviets because they were already in position to medal now, for this next part, I haven't been able to completely verify this information, but I'm going to summarize some of the allegations and their relation to getting this rule changed. You see, according to reports from Australian journalist Roy Masters, 
The Japanese athletic company Mizuno had paid to be the official torch relay sponsor of the games. And so at the end of the relay, when the flame gets lit by the Soviet athletes, they were supposed to be wearing Mizuno shoes. You see, 1980 was the first year Mizuno began selling shoes in the United States, but the US ended up boycotting these games. So what ended up happening is that they were both wearing Adidas shoes. And so Masters claims that the head of track and field's world governing body, IAAF, which is now World Athletics, they attempted to make up for this by fixing an event in which the Soviets were favored to win because that way they could ensure that athletes would be standing on the podium wearing Mizuno shoes. And so then what happened was the IAF president then allegedly pulled all of their inspectors, the IAF officials who wear red jackets from the field and left only Soviet officials to judge all the events without outside supervision. Now, the allegations that the Soviets were favoring their own athletes started at that triple jump event, but they also were reported at many of the other events and they were reported so much so that the governing body had to end up returning their officials for the final part of the week. So Masters suggests that because Viktor Senev, who had won three consecutive gold medals and was definitely one of the favorites to win the event, the Soviet jumpers, who were amazing athletes in their own right, had unknowingly found themselves at the center of a triple jump competition that was specifically rigged so that the athletes wearing Mizuno shoes would win and be on the podium. Now there are a few issues with Masters theory. For starters, if you look at both Soviet jumpers, they appear to be wearing ASICS shoes and not Mizuno shoes. Now, ASICS is also a Japanese brand, so there could be confusion there, but Japan, along with the United States and many other countries, boycotted this Olympics as well. Now, one thing we do know for certain is that the red-coated officials from IAF were not present during the early part of the week, and they did return during the later part of the week. Now, regardless of whether it was rigged or not, numerous rule violations occurred. You see, the athletes should have been allowed to protest their jumps and the plasticine board should not have been moved before the athletes had a chance to follow through with their dispute. And additionally, if the athlete was adamant about protesting their jump, the jump should have been measured as a precaution instead of quickly raked away. So either the IAF officials were incompetent or the alleged Soviet officials were incompetent or they intentionally were colluding to favor the Soviet athletes. Now, remember the US was boycotting this event, so because of the publicity that all this got, the IAF was forced to reevaluate the rules that ended up playing into these events. And so some of the things they looked at is first place, why would an athlete even be in a position to scrape their foot? When we look at the biomechanics of the triple jump, what the athlete's trying to do is they're trying to keep postural integrity and pelvic alignment. Basically, they're trying to make sure that they're in the right position so that when their foot makes ground contact, their swing leg or the leg that's coming through is gonna come through at the right time so that they're not out of balance. And so in order to preserve their horizontal velocity, they need high amplitudes of movements, which means they need longer arms and legs as they swing through. So if the whole point is to get your body in the right position to conserve momentum, then if your foot comes through and scrapes or hits the ground, you're gonna not only decelerate, but you're gonna kind of fall out, fumble, and you're gonna put your body out of alignment, and that's significantly gonna reduce your ability to control the jump. So after IAF reevaluated the rules, they likely concluded that, kind of what you and I are already thinking, that even if an athlete may scrape or drag their foot on the ground, either by accident or maybe as a stylistic nature, it's only gonna impede that athlete's performance. It's not gonna affect the integrity of the sport or provide some kind of unfair advantage. So now if we look at the current rules, rule 32.2 states, it shall not be considered a failure if an athlete while jumping touches the ground with a sleeping leg and that's their swing leg. So as they pull it through. Like this, I have a whole series on band techniques and track and field that you can go check out. Thanks for watching. Now, physics tells us that if you scrape your foot on the ground when you're bringing your swimming leg through, I always, it's gonna take me four tries. Now, physics alone tell us that if you scrape your foot on the ground as you're coming through foot, this is hard. <laughs>